This is a floppy disk. And back in the days, we were using floppy disks with floppy drives in order to read and write data on floppy disks. Over the time, the floppy disks were killed by the internet, the cloud, and of course, by USB sticks. If you have an old computer and you want to replace the floppy drive with something modern that is capable of running um, from a USB stick, this is exactly the video that you're looking for because today I'm going to explain you the exact steps how to build your own open source hardware floppy simulator that works with USB sticks. This is open flops. And the first step is to make a printed circuit board. And speaking about high quality PCB prototypes, you should visit the website of our sponsor, PCBWay.com. PCBWay is capable of manufacturing high quality printed circuit boards with different materials, colors, sizes, and dimensions with up to 14 layers. Furthermore, PCBWay also offers assembly services, CNC, and 3D printing. OpenFlops is an entirely open source hardware project. The schematics are available in GitHub and they have been shared there by Sukupera. OpenFlops has been designed as an alternative of Gotek, as an open source hardware floppy disk drive emulator or simulator. The printed circuit board has been designed with the popular free and open source software KiCad, which runs on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Linux distributions. OpenFlops has the same dimensions as the printed circuit board of Gotek, therefore it could be used as a drop-in replacement with all cases that are compatible with Gotek. Furthermore, Sukupera, the author of this uh, OpenFlops printed circuit board, has shared Gerber files ready to be manufactured in the shared project directory of PCBWay. Therefore, you can order it with single click without worrying about the different configurations of the PCB. This is exactly what I did and in a few days PCBWay manufactured it and shipped it to me via DHL. I received 5 high quality green printed circuit boards with white seal screen. As you can see everything was very well packaged and the delivery was super quick. To be honest with you, it took me a while to hand solder and assemble all these 5 boards but with the magic of video editing, we can directly skip this part and have a look at the finished product. I'm living in Bulgaria, therefore I source components from Comet Electronics. There is no doubt that the hardest part of the assembly is the STM32 microcontroller. And by the way, if you're not into soldering, PCBWay also offers an assembly service, so you can get the printed circuit board fully assembled from them. On the front of open flops, we have the USB type A connector and two buttons. There are also a couple of 3mm LEDs to indicate when the uh, floppy emulator is working. On the printed circuit board, there is a placeholder for headers to attach a rotary encoder, but in this demonstration, I'm not going to do it. In the middle of the board, there is a slot for attaching an I2C mini OLED display and also a buzzer. On the back, we have mail pin headers at 90 degree angle for the standard interface that all PC floppy disk drives use. This is called Sugared Associates SA400 interface. There is also a connector for the power of the floppy and some jumper pins to configure open flops and the firmware depending on the hardware to which you are retrofitting open flops. My printed circuit board is ready and fully assembled. It's time for the next step. Let's make it useful. We need a firmware and Flash Floppy is an open source firmware hosted in GitHub which converts Gotek and compatible hardware such as open flops into a floppy drive emulator. The author of the project is Care Fraser from the UK. Flash Floppy supports a massive range of retro computers, synthesizers, and old industrial machinery. OpenFlops comes with STM32 microcontroller, and there are two methods how to program it. The first method is to use USB programming, and the second method is to use a UART to USB serial debug cable in order to flash a Flash Floppy uh, hex file to the STM32. 
I'm a Linux user, therefore I'm gonna take the second approach using this uh, UART to USB cable and the STM32 flush uh, command line application. The benefit of the particular UR to USB that I'm using is that it also provides a pin for 5 volts, so I can directly wire everything to the open flops. Using a jumper, I'm gonna temporarily shorten the boot pins in order to put the STM32 microcontroller in flash mode. Please have a look at the description of the video for a link with more details about the wiring. It is important to know that RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. I'm using Ubuntu Linux on my computers and I have installed STM32 Flash. Now it's time to run the application and wait for about a minute so that uh, the firmware will be transferred to the microcontroller on open flops. After successfully flashing, remove all wires and the jumper that connected the boot pins. My open flops is ready to be used with flash floppy and now it's time to assemble it into the old computer that I'm trying to revive. Actually I'm renovating not one but three Amiga 500 units. In order to retrofit open flops in Amiga A500 I need an appropriate stand. Luckily there is an appropriate 3D model shared in Thingiverse, link is in the description of the video and I'm using my old 3D printer to make several of these units. My 3D printer is quite old and honestly I rarely use it nowadays, however it is good enough for this job because the stand that I'm 3D printing will be inside the case and will be barely visible, I would even say that it's not going to be visible. I also need a few screws in order to mount it inside the Amiga 500 case. I soldered additional 4 wires to be able to have the mini OLED display out of the case. Finally we are on the last step and it's time for a demo. As you can see now my open flops is inside the Amiga 500 and the stand that I 3D printed is actually a stand that has been designed for Godot, but considering that uh, OpenFlops has the same size and dimensions like Godot printed circuit board, as you can see it fits pretty well. The buttons allow me to move up and down between the images that are uploaded on the USB stick, these are images of different floppies that are compatible with Amiga 500. I have attached a rather big but really nice mini yellow blue OLED display, uh, it is connected over I2C. For Amiga 500 there is a really handy tool called Amiga Test Kit and surprise surprise it is by the same author who has created Flash Floppy firmware. After loading this kit I can uh, run some tests with the floppy drive, I'm gonna test reading and writing. Once again, thanks to the magic of video editing, I'm going to speed up things. Everything is okay and the test passed, my open flops is fine, it's able to read and to write from a USB stick and this is a really convenient replacement of the old bulky and slow floppy. By the way, the Amiga test kit detects that this is actually not a real floppy but something significantly faster, something like Gotek or in my case the open source hardware alternative, open flops. The second demonstration is of course with the workbench on Amiga 500. I have it as an image on the exactly same USB stick so there is no need to swap the USB sticks, it's unlike floppies, I can have multiple files, multiple image on the same USB drive. It takes some time to load, it's a huge software after all and uh, we are loading with the speed that Amiga is capable of loading. I have attached a mouse, this is the famous Commodore tank mouse for Amiga computers. Let's browse through the menus, here is a calculator and I can do some simple calculations to verify that everything is working, as you can see OpenFlops is working perfectly well. Let's wrap up this video with some important conclusions. OpenFlops is an open source hardware alternative of Godek. It is a floppy drive emulator that uses the flash floppy firmware, which is also open source. I have shown you all the steps how you can build open flops from scratch. It is a great gadget and it's the perfect tool to revive 
an old PC and to bring it into the new times with USB stick support. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.